friends, here there are five places where the construction of overbridge is going on. This rainy season, it's tough to reach school and back home on time. Roads are blocked. The engineers are trying hard to build the artificial bridges. Everywhere have oak that appeared fatally to mar all natural grace. The rainwater with mud splashes on every traveler and vehicle. At a glance, it's all dirt and ugly. In the Indian context, it takes a minimum of five years to change the scenario. The overbridge will be the most glaring festoon with ivy. In the wheel of time, nature changes landscape either naturally or artificially. The scenario of summer and autumn are very contrasting. Nature wonderfully reasserts her power of restoration. It's an altogether a unique and unexpected vision of a resurrection with loveliness. In this post-COVID era, physically, economically and socially, we are under reconstruction. For a while, it seems to be all dirt and ugly, splashing dirt of grief and pain on everyone. Saint Euphrasia was a unique person who offered her life to be refashioned and recreated by the author and owner of her life. Her childhood was very beautiful and charming, with memories of luxury and comfort. First daughter of a noble landowner who had more than enough of land, name and fame. To the surprise of the proud landowner who cherishes a dream of a grand wedding for his beloved daughter, who requests to join the convent. Here is the starting point. The patriarchal proud denied the request and assured that he is ready to send his second daughter to the convent, who died within a month. Ultimately, fear of God gripped the landlord and he, with a trembling heart, is ready to send his sweetheart to the convent. The reconstruction and restructuring is very hard to the existing entity. One by one, glory, name, fame, land, house, everything was taken away from him, just like Job. The balance sheet had only shame to its credit, with unaccountable tears and no place to lay his head. But Saint Euphrasia could sense God solaces at work. Her extraordinary vision and ecstasies weaved a garment for the spirit of heaviness and to add beauty for the ashes. There will be green pastures once more. The valley of life will again invite the summer tint, the music of the stream and the gush of sunshine. Looking beyond the present crucial pain and shame, like St. Paul, she exhorts that the suffering in the present time are not worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed to us. Her eyes of faith could see how the divine architecture digs deep to build her into a strong for the building to be tall and not to tumble. Dear friends, when you feel that your life is spiraling downwards or you are overcome with loneliness or the weight of responsibilities on your shoulder are crushing. You will be able to withstand more readily the gale force winds of hard times and pain. When life is tough, cast your cares on the Lord and He will sustain you. There are still purposes to be fulfilled, lives to touch, things to be accomplished and characters to be formed from inside. Press on with holy tenacity. Know that the one who loves you 
is working all things together for his good purposes. Suffering is known to produce perseverance, perseverance, character and character, hope. And remember, hope will never disappoint you. May the divine architecture restructure your life for greater glory.